In response to the Donald Trump electoral victory, alternative media outlets on YouTube are talking about how they will continue to speak truth to power in the face of a Trump presidency. But what they really tend to miss out on is what they consider to be a threat to establishment power. And when liberal alternative media outlets to the corporate media speak, what they tend to miss is that they do not address capitalism as the main source of the problem with establishment power. They talk about government corruption, they talk about things that are symptoms of capitalism, but they don't talk about capitalism as the cause. And here I'm going to show you a clip of the Young Turks from a few weeks ago where they talked about how they would not cater to establishment power. But I think that they are genuinely missing something in their criticism. Because the Young Turks is still a capitalist company and none of its members denounce capitalism as a whole, or advocate for democratic ownership of the means of production at all, so they come up short. Take a look. So the election has happened and Donald Trump has won, and I know it seems unbelievable, uh, and every once in a while I think, oh my God, he was a reality show host, and now he's going to be president. Unbelievable. Now having said that, he, he did win. Now he didn't win the popular vote, I know more people voted for Hillary Clinton, and he has an astounding 58.5% um, uh, disapproval rating. That's the day of the election, 58.5%. Mm -hmm. Would disapprove of the guy that won. And that's all true, but at no point do, has anyone addressed the problem with liberal bourgeois democracy. Because it is a system like this where... People elect figureheads of power to lead a capitalist republic that allowed for Donald Trump to rise to power in the first place. A divisive figure who doesn't need to have any experience or political ambitions, but is a celebrity and therefore is appealing to a public whose consent has been manufactured by a capitalist mass media that they do not have the power to change or impact their lives directly. So they, they must refer to one of two options, almost equally unappealing. And again, no one on the Young Turks addresses capitalism as the cause of that problem. Liberal democracy is not democracy at all. You cannot have a democracy without economic democracy and democracy of the workplace and society as a whole. By containing it to government, you get the illusion of popular will. Not popular will exercised in real time and in real life. And as they continue, they're not going to understand that. As I said, Jank Huger is going to dance around that issue. Amazing. But I still don't love the chance of the protests of not our president. Because mm -hmm. whether we like it or we don't, he is our president. He's going to be our president. Okay? I did say that in my video about Malcolm X. Uh, he will be our president. But that doesn't mean we can't invalidate him. But as long as we validate capitalism and the Republican system of the United States, we allow for his power to be maintained. 
we allow for the power of the United States government to be maintained, and we allow for the power of the capitalist class to be maintained, because the people who are not controlling the affairs of society are stuck with this outcome. He's not our president because he has nothing to do with us. If we keep having to choose only among whom the bourgeois say we're allowed to choose from, we will get a demagogue once in a while. At other times, we'll get a populist who will cater to our sense of charity and welfare and stave off revolutions. Those are the kinds of people like Franklin Delano Roosevelt or Bernie Sanders. People who are pro-establishment but want the people as comfortable as the, it can be in order to maintain in the status quo. Donald Trump, on the other hand, wants to consolidate power and make it as much of a demagoguery and loud and cult of personality type presidency as he can. He has said in the past that he wants to delegate power to his vice president and basically be a figurehead. Again, this is only possible in a capitalist republic. So, again, how can we stop it? We can stop it by taking the power for ourselves. But, on the other hand, not on our watch, to me, makes a lot of sense. Not on whose watch, Jank? Yours? Liberals? It seems like you are going to let an awful lot of shit go because you're comfortable with a certain framework of the establishment and of culture. You just want to tweak it a little bit. So on your watch and on the watch of people who are ideologically similar to you, yes, things are going to get more destructive. That's the nature of capitalism. So some folks are saying, hey, eat Give the guy a chance. Uh, today I was on Larry King's show and he asked, is there any possible upside? And I stretched. <laughs> I said, okay, look, he's against TPP and if he actually does the things that he says, get out corruption. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. But there is excellent reason to believe that he is not going to go in that direction based on what he has said, what he has done, and now his transition team and the people that they have proposed. So if he goes in the direction of targeting uh, racial or religious minorities, uh, bigotry, sexism, or just unconstitutional actions that are against the core fabric of America. I don't care what happens to be the core fabric of America. America was founded on principles of private property and slavery and republicanism as opposed to democracy. So whatever happens to be good about the framework of America is accidental in my view. And what we need to do is actually fight for a society that's correct, not one that just happens to be within the framework of America. Because what happens to be within the framework of America is capitalism. So we don't need to fight for American ideals. We just need to fight for correct ideals. We need to fight for ideals which give us the most power possible. And what gives us the most power possible is worker control over the means of production. Well, then we've got to unite and say, not on our watch. I doubt Jank, as the owner of a limited liability corporation, that you'll be doing much of the uniting that's actually necessary. Liberal opposition to conservative or borderline fa Ashist ideals is fine, but it's not sufficient because you are still maintaining the illusion of democracy under a dictatorship of the bourgeois. It doesn't exist. So we're going to find a way to fight back. Now, you think, okay, but why us and why you guys, our viewers, and how, right? Well, a critical part of this puzzle, guys, is the media. So if you don't have the media on your side, 
well, then it's very hard to get your message out. If the only alternative you present them okay, is a voluntarily funded, capitalist structured small business, then it's going to be very hard to get the message out of alternative structures of power if you still believe and practice hierarchy. Because that is not how opposition movements actually go forward. There needs to be a change in the function of culture and ownership in order for things to fundamentally change in the way they need to, to give people the most power they can. So, if you maintain your business model, you're not going to perform changes that are necessary for revolutions that you think you are going to perform. The Young Turks is admirable in the way they do things in opposition to traditional corporate media, but it's still a corporation, a smaller corporation, a differently funded corporation, but still fundamentally capitalist and therefore pro-establishment. And if you become the new establishment, you'll set a new normal. You'll beat out one, but capitalism will be maintained It'll seem more ethical. I'm not sure that this is the best path for you to go down if you maintain this. And so the media we have today is the media that led us to having Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump as the two candidates. Exactly. Who would have thought a capitalist against a capitalist leads to a capitalist crisis? The two most disliked candidates in American history. But that's a consequence and a limit of liberal democracy if it's not exercised as socialist democracy. We can create our media, and we have, and that media can actually speak for you guys. But what it can't do is provide an alternative power structure that would be presented in the best interest of you guys. And can fight back. Now look, part of that is become part of the Young Turks, right? So our members make all of this possible, whether it's Jordan Charton going and doing all that great coverage during the primaries of Bernie. So let me ask Shank, why don't the members of the Young Turks own part of the profits of the Young Turks? Why don't your production crews and your correspondents all become owners of the Young Turks? Workers and the members make it possible, so why aren't we in charge of any of its agenda? I understand you're, you're journalists and correspondents and you are, but you just hired reporters and you were previously just news commentary. You had, and Jank, you are the owner of the business. Your members make the business possible, so why don't they own it? Why don't your team on it. Why doesn't everyone who works for you and who makes your work possible become an owner of the Young Turks? Sanders, whether it was him challenging the Clinton team, honestly, we basically got Donna Brazil removed from CNN mm -hmm. because Jordan was the first person to find the, the letter of Donna Brazil, the email saying, hey, um, I'm going to leak the questions to Hillary Clinton. He was the first person to find the second email connecting her. He was the person that challenged her on camera. And so now, but it wasn't just Jordan that did it. It wasn't just us that did it. It was you that did it. Does Jordan own part of the Young Turks? No, I, I don't think that's the case. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But as far as I know, the Young Turks is completely capitalist structured. Why is that the case? Because without the members, we could not have hired Jordan. And without Jordan, you could not keep surplus value that Jordan produces for you. And we couldn't do the shows that we do. So come join us. Be our media. So that's tytnetwork.com slash join. But it's not just about that. Look, share what we do here.
because you you need we need some resistance here not resistance to capitalism as a whole just some abstract parts of it that you don't realize are caused by capitalism just some parts of it some corruption that is a direct consequence of capitalism existing that's what you want to stop but not capitalism itself some place that if things go wrong that's going to call it like it actually is instead of the mainstream media that's going to go back to their neutrality you know they're going to do it they're already doing it well to be fair to be fair to Donald Trump you know we're just going to be neutral and okay he wants to put in Claire Lopez who is a conspiracy theorist and 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 now you put in Chris Kobach as maybe the attorney general who is considering starting up a Muslim registry well CNN is just going to call it even a lot of people are going to call it even and they're going to maybe report it as a story one day and then they're going to let it go they're going to let it go hey it's not our job well that's our job somewhat you're correct it is your job to provide your perspective rather than blatant neutrality and you are going to be slightly better than establishment journalism but when it comes right down to it you are not going to tell people that capitalism is the problem you are not going to structure your business in a way that directly confronts capitalism because it's still structured according to its principles so in the end you are essentially trying to become a new better and quieter establishment but you're not going to fundamentally change it so your job is to say don't get too crazy there are only a few things we need to do no there aren't only a few things we need to do what we need to do is a bullish capitalism and the culture that surrounds it that those are very big subtasks it's a very big mission and you're not going to talk about any of that because you are a capitalist so you created our media so let's keep it going let's grow strong together yeah i think that what we're going to see with you know establishment media and we've seen it in the past but i think it's going to be amplified under trump and and it's even more damaging under trump is the same obsession with access they're going to want the interviews with white house officials they're going to want access to white house press briefings and things like that that type of access sways them and and yes. it, it it leads to the type of neutrality that you see in the media that was so damaging during this past election but i think that under trump a lot of media outlets also fear what could happen to them if they're honest. I mean, look at how Trump has aggressively gone after the New York Times for their uh reporting that, you know, maybe casts him in a negative light. Uh and he attacks them and all of a sudden now they're like, "Oh, maybe we should give Trump a chance." Right? And so joining us really means, look, even if you can't be a member, even if you can't contribute to the show financially, you can help mobilize people to resist some of Trump's policies. That's exactly to only a partial extent will an organization like the Young Turks actually encourage resistance against Trump's policies. They'll encourage obstructionism against blatant human rights violations, but in the end they will not see capitalism as a blatant human rights violation. If a in the streets on the ground revolution started which explicitly had the mission of overthrowing capitalism in favor or of a socialist society the young turks would not support that i think and they would be too hung up on the optics of it maybe in the necessity to resist the state violence with self defense i don't know what would happen but i doubt they would be in all throated support of it because it's going to get messy and it's going to get revolutionary past the point of their comfort zone so 
How far does the resistance go for liberal capitalists? I don't know. Exactly right. Help in any way you can. And when I say our media, I don't mean just TYT. Be your own media. Happy to be my own media. Thank you. You know, grab a camera, go out to a protest, uh, join Wolfpack. Jo Already join Wolfpack was happy to be one of the people who helped it pass in my home state. But it's still not nearly enough because it doesn't address overthrowing capitalism. Join any group that you think is going to make a difference. But be, you know, we call this rebel headquarters, but you could be a rebel on your own with another group. But just get ready for the resistance. So, of course, we're going to uh, see what he actually does. We're not going to prejudge. But at the same time, we're not going to let him take 18 steps before we mobilize into action. And if you're not mobilizing to call for the overthrow of capitalism, you're not mobilizing enough. So we're not going to wait for, well, he came for these guys and he came for that guy. No, the minute he... First, they came for the socialist, and Cenk Uger did not speak up because he was not a socialist. He comes for anybody, then we're, it's, it's our watch. Right. Really, Cenk, anybody, even if it's your direct opposition. Bear in mind that Rosa Luxemburg, a socialist revolutionary, was killed not by conservative or fascist opposition, but by social democrats who felt she was too extreme. Just think about that. I mean, okay. look, there's power in numbers. And I think the thing that we've lacked for decades now is um, organizing and mobilizing, right? You know, we saw movements like Occupy Wall Street, and I feel like it lacked, um, you know, the organization that it needed to be powerful and impactful. And, and hopefully, you know, we can organize and mobilize in a way that is effective and we can be prepared so if occupy wall street was crushed by opposition from the american police state so i don't know if it's fair to judge occupy wall street for being too chaotic and also anna how are you going to be prepared again if you're preparing fascist opposition with liberal opposition, you are still maintaining capitalism and allowing for fascist opposition to prop up again. So if you're not fighting capitalism explicitly, you really are not fighting for enough. There are policies that actually harm the disenfranchised or harm the majority of Americans. We can fight back. We'll have a way of doing that because we're doing it all together as a group. And no, you're doing it as the Young Turks, which is one organization that happens to be funded slightly differently and is a marginal improvement over the rest of the establishment, but it's still not managed or owned any differently or imparts any sort of different social order. Policies that harm the disenfranchised are directly caused by capitalism. And if you're not fighting capitalism, you are not fighting those policies in the way they need to be fought. And average Americans who he claimed he was going to represent, uh, well, we're going to look out for everybody, okay, including the workers of this country. Because he promised them jobs, he promised to clean up corruption. If he does it, great. If he doesn't do it, well, we're not going to let him get away with it. So The goal of workers' liberation should not be to have ample opportunity to work for capitalists. It should be getting to a mode of production and society that makes capitalists no longer necessary for the function of labor. So, and by the way, the, it's not just esoteric, it's real. We're gonna tell you where the protests are. We're gonna tell you where, you, and we're gonna begin to do this going forward where you can go to volunteer, where you can go to help, where you can go to make a difference. If you're not protesting capitalism, you're not protesting enough. You could cover them, you could would present them as a way to be against government corruption. But that corruption is only possible because capitalism exists and because republicanism exists and because the a framing of private property exists as a concept. 
that's the only reasons why it's possible. They're never going to tell you that on CNN. They consider that biased. Right? The New York Times won't tell you that. It's biased. They say, oh, if you're fighting back against Trump, you're biased. I don't give a damn what you call us, okay? And Jenk, as the CEO of a privately owned small business, you have a vested bias in being against socialism. Yes, it's wise to be against Trump, but it would be hard to be against capitalism because you are quite literally a capitalist, a petty capitalist, but still a capitalist. But we are, if he goes in the wrong direction, we are going to fight back. And this fighting fascist agendas with liberal opposition does not destroy fascism. It only delays it. This will be rebel headquarters. So tytnetwork.com slash join. All of us together can do all these things, but you've got to be with us uh, and, and in any way that you want, but that make sure that you're ready for that fight. So uh, I guess we are the sword in the darkness, the watchers on the wall. And if the night appears to be gathering, Anna. So now our watch begins. If you're not watching out specifically to overthrow capitalism, you're watching for the wrong targets. The Young Turks is a relatively good news outlet, but it is not a revolutionary one. And as long as it's going to be structured as a capitalist owned business, then it can't be because it would be against its own interest to do that. You can't adequately fight for socialism if you voluntarily set up a structure which betrays that. Now, Jenks not naive enough to think that he is a socialist while owning a capitalist-owned business. He has said that he is a capitalist and supports it. But as long as he supports capitalism, and as long as the Young Turks are modeled after capitalism, it can't be nearly as revolutionary as it needs to be. Only when you speak out directly against the threats and perils and disasters of capitalism and adequately and actively try to resist the our social order, and not just the current political climate, can you really be a revolutionary? So with that said, we have a lot of work to do, but it's not going to be done the way the Young Turks want it to be done. What the Young Turks are doing is not nearly enough. For Democratize the Media, I'm Jeremy Einbinder. Thanks for watching. Solidarity and resist. Actually resist.